Welcome back to another episode of Psycho Cinematic. Today we'll be covering The Good Son, directed by Joseph Rubin, and as always, spoilers ahead. So this movie originally released in 1993, meaning that currently it's 30 years old and is actually inspired by a movie that came out in 1956 called The Bad Seed. And this film stars two of America's sweethearts, Macaulay Culkin and Elijah Wood. And both of them were 12 years old at the time of shooting this film. As I like to do, I'm gonna go in chronological order of things that stuck out to me I found interesting. And there was a lot to this movie that I did find interesting. So the first thing was really just nostalgia when Elijah Elijah Wood's character Mark is playing his Game Boy. I haven't seen one of those in forever, but it just took me back to the days where I would be playing Jurassic Park or Star Wars nonstop. Now, quickly in this movie, you start to learn that Macaulay Culkin's character, Henry, is trying to make his family disappear. And if you saw my short on here or maybe on Instagram or TikTok, I joked about how what is up with Macaulay Culkin getting typecasted to try and make his family disappear because this movie came right after Home Alone. And I joked that I would totally be down for a multiverse where we see Henry in the Home Alone universe just brutalizing the people trying to break into his home. That would be crazy. The first scene that we kind of get an inclination that Henry is different is when they're climbing up to the treehouse. And I have a few things to say about this scene, but first, Macaulay Culkin's haircut, when he's looking down, he reminds me so much of Patty Pimblet or Patty the Batty. If you watch UFC, you know exactly who I'm talking about, but I'm be throwing up images on the screen. So sorry if you're only listening, the, the visuals spot on, in my opinion. Something that stuck out to me about this scene was the fact that Henry's sister just kind of appears out of nowhere. And sure, she might have been trailing behind them, but it was just weird because when they're running out there, She's nowhere in sight. They start climbing. She's nowhere in sight. And then all of a sudden she's there watching them climb. And I started wondering, like, is she dead? Is she a ghost? You know, that that kind of thing. Because I, I didn't know where the movie was going to go necessarily because this was my first time watching it. So I don't know if that was a mistake on their part or really what was up with that. Another interesting thing. At this point, Henry is wearing two black shoes. I missed this, but read about it later that later in the film, he's wearing one black shoe, one white shoe, symbolizing the fact that, you know, he can be seen as good because he's a child. But really, he just got darkness inside and he doesn't feel emotion towards Towards you at all other than just wanting to end your life and do whatever he wants. So it's interesting that he's wearing two black shoes at this point, but I think it's because this is going to be the first moment where we see him acting different than a normal kid. When Henry and Mark first meet each other and Henry kicks him under the table, that's something that you could probably expect from a little boy anyway. But not when he catches Mark from falling from the treehouse and then saying to him, if I let you go, do you think you could fly? Yikes. That's really fucking creepy. So with that in mind, I am very glad that I didn't record this podcast immediately after watching the film or even a couple days after the film because I just thought about this yesterday. So one, definite foreshadowing for the way that Henry dies in the end when he's dropped off the cliff. But what's more significant about this is when he throws Mr. Highway over onto the highway and then there's that 10 car pile up and then they go and talk about what he had just done later, he says that when you learn that you can do whatever you want, you're free, you can fly. And so in the end, he's dropped off that cliff, he's been doing whatever he wants, and now he's flying. Poetic justice. Regarding this treehouse too, I'm wondering, uh, maybe you can let me know in the comment section, did you have a treehouse, and if so, is this way higher up than your treehouse was? Because I felt like this was absurdly tall. I always wanted a treehouse as a kid, but I imagined that maybe it'd be like eight feet off the ground, not fucking like 25. That shit was crazy. Throughout this movie, I was really enjoying some of the camera movements that they were doing. Is like a lot of crane looking camera movements where the camera would start off high and then move low and it pans and pushes. And it, those movements were super dynamic. And I was watching a little bit of behind the scenes from even just this treehouse shot. And it looks like they've got the camera suspended on a rig and they're pulling it up. But I just love that they're doing all that extra work to make sure that the shot looks as good as possible possible. So we start to get the inclination, if we didn't have it already, that Henry is a sociopath or a psychopath. It's really hard for me to at least distinguish between them. Even when I look at stuff online that says the difference, I feel like we're splitting hairs. But we see this when, you know, he pretends to 
not actually shoot at the cat, but then he ends up shooting and killing the dog. And I have to say, when that dog died and it, it yelped, my dog was sleeping on the couch next to me and his head shot up and he's looking at the TV for about five minutes. You know, he's, he's not really paying attention to the images, but he's listening for that crying dog. It was sad. So I had written down, I couldn't imagine having a home right on the coast like that. I feel like any kind of coastline would be scary just because the ocean can be very unpredictable and the water's super turbulent. Uh, so most of this film was apparently shot in Rockport, Massachusetts, but the whole cliff thing, because they couldn't find a cliff in that area that, and they were doing tons of location scouts. They ended up going to Minnesota and it overlooks Lake Superior. It's like a 180 foot cliff or something like that. It's nuts. And I'll get into that a little bit more towards the end once we start to cover the cliff scene. So when I was finalizing my notes for this podcast, I was looking at the IMDb trivia and it said that this film had never got a UK theatrical release when it came out. And you might've seen my short that I put out on this, but it's just crazy because I, I, I looked it up just to be sure that that was in fact true. And lo and behold, it was. And that was because of the James Bolger case. And basically to sum that up really quickly, James Bolger was a two-year-old boy who was abducted by two 10-year-old boys. And then he was basically tortured, beaten to death, and then left for dead on train tracks. And it's all very graphic when you start looking into that. But it's just crazy because one of the killers, John Venables, is currently in the news because he's trying to get parole, even though he was released in 2001, but then he reoffended for having child abuse images, which a 60 Minutes video that I saw on YouTube really said that it was child pornography, which is just awful. He went to prison in 2010, and then he was released in 2013, went and reoffended again, found himself in prison 2017, and he's been there since. And so now he's looking for parole again. It's an absolute shit show. And I just thought it was eerie that he was in the news just while I was looking at this case that is 30 years old. Yeah, it's just strange that I happened to watch The Good Son and then he happens to be in the news and all that. Something I forgot to mention earlier was that the actress who plays Connie is actually Macaulay Culkin's sister, and the picture we see of Richard is his brother, Rory Culkin. So it was a family affair. When Mark is talking to the therapist about evil, she responds to him, evil is what people say when they give up trying to understand why someone does something. And she says she doesn't believe in evil. I, I get that to a certain extent, like, you know, there are reasons most people are messed up. And then some people like Henry being like a child psychopath or sociopath probably just doesn't have all the wires connected in the right places. And that would be why, but doesn't take away the fact that it, he is doing evil things. And so I would say get a different therapist. That's awful. So when Henry lies to his mom saying that Mark wants to move into Richard's room, I was wondering, is that just to stir the pot and then, you know, relish in the despair from his mom? Or is he subtly marking Mark for death? Marking Mark, not Marky Mark. Because <laughs> to me, it feels like that Babe Ruth thing where before you actually swing at the ball, you're calling where it's gonna go. I love the part where they're about to play hide and go seek and Henry says to Mark, you better find her first. Holy shit. Like if if that doesn't like light a fire under your ass, then he goes and fucking switches the breaker panel off. Like this kid is evil, but yeah, the tension, oh. But then when they're up in the attic, there is some instant foreshadowing for the way that Henry's actually going to try and kill his sister because you see the ice skates swinging in the background. For that scene when Henry goes and throws his sister into the ice skating thing, I was wondering how, how did they do that? That looked really good. It, it looks like they're actually on set. It looks like real ice. It looks really cold. And from what I can find online of like the, the how it was made, it looks like they did actually do that and they had divers ready. That's just crazy. That's freezing. And also, I mean, I would be terrified of getting trapped under the ice and it just feels like that there's no way to do that safely, but it sounds like they did. Nowadays, I'm pretty sure we would just do that in a nice and warm studio, VFX, some, some uh, fog coming out of your mouth as you're breathing and pretend like you're shivering, put in some fake snow, maybe green screen the background. And that's why I feel like a lot of the movies today, like 
just don't have this same visceral effect. Probably my favorite quote from Henry is when he says, hey, Mark, don't fuck with me. <laughs> I, I love that. I don't know. It's just something weird about seeing Kevin McAllister saying, hey, Mark, don't fuck with me. I know he's not Kevin McAllister, but you get what I'm saying. So when Henry's mom goes into his little shack and sees the the creatures hanging there and like these masks that he's making, she doesn't seem to be that alarmed until she finds Richard's duck. And it's like, why weren't you alarmed from all this other weird shit in there? And then also, why haven't you checked in on this stuff earlier? Like, what are you doing? You gotta, you gotta look after your kids. I'm sure he's been doing this shit forever. Okay, and now for the cliff scene. Again, I was like, how did they shoot this? This looks really good. This does not look like green screen or rear projection. How did they do it? And it turns out they just did it for real. Like they're actually on this cliff and the kids worked with a stunt coordinator for what I read was five weeks and just so that they were comfortable being in harnesses actually hanging off this cliff and delivering their lines. And then I read that Macaulay Culkin actually did a cable drop, like he he dropped like 30 feet in exchange for a BB gun. It's crazy what they were down to let 12 year olds do, but you know what, like it, feels visceral. I believed it. It looks great. And you know what they also did to make it look like it was the ocean? They apparently chummed up the water, chummed up as in getting waves in the water. They were just driving boats back and forth to get waves to make it look more turbulent because this is just Lake Superior. And then Henry's mom ultimately chooses Mark over Henry because she knows that Henry is evil and she wants to save one of them. Amazing ending. And the cherry on top was a voiceover from Mark when he was saying how he wonders if Susan would make that same decision today to choose him over Henry. Some heavy shit to be thinking. And that's it. That's all I have for you guys today on The Good Son. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. Comment what you thought down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.